Catherine and welcome to Catherine's Garden and Home, where we grow, 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 grow together in Catherine's Garden and Home. Well, how is everyone doing today? I hope that all is well with you. I hope that things are going well for you. Well, here we are at Catherine's Garden and Home and I am so excited about today. At first, I was wondering, well, what am I going to talk about? What are we going to discuss? And the more that I started thinking about it and just thinking about the excitement of getting things together, and then I looked around and da-da, I saw my fig trees. I said to myself, this is what we're going to share today because I see my fig trees every single day, of course, because they're in my home, but you haven't seen them for a while. At least if you didn't watch last week's, you would have missed uh, seeing the fig trees. And then if you haven't seen them for a while, maybe you saw them in February, you haven't seen how much they have grown now here in March. And they are so beautiful. Look at the size of these leaves. They're almost as big as or bigger than my hand. And I have just been amazed at the progress of my fig trees. Remember that they started out as just little stems. Remember I had cut them off as a branch and it was just this little, little stem here. And I put it in water. It had, uh, actually it, it was part of, um, a bouquet that I had created uh, because it was like we were down to see it's even blocking my face it was down to um, it was it was last year and what happened was that I you I was creating for you all floral arrangements right and then um, it was too cold to be outside so I started coming inside but I still wanted to make some kind of floral arrangement. I wanted to bring something in. So I cut the leaves of the fig tree that I had out there, the, the branches actually, the branches, because the leaves were looking really good and healthy. They were big like this. And I thought it would make a really nice bouquet. So I put the fig stems in the water and eventually the leaves fell off, but I left the the stems in the water and they started developing roots. And so I was able to transplant these stems and now look at that. They're like mini trees in my home. I am just so impressed with, uh, with how quickly the, um, the fig tree developed into this beautiful, beautiful, uh, sample here. Um, they're not seedlings, they're little trees. <laughs> and I'm just so pleased with that because I have three of them. Uh, it's three different branches. So this is one, and this one is really big, and uh, the leaves are just beautiful. And then this one back here is not as large, but it too is growing very well. It's so cute. You can see that. And the little stems. It's so cute. Hello, hello, hello there. Hello, everyone. Come on in, come on in. I made it. And then I have the other one here. And I am just really excited about this because um, I remember, it wasn't last year, but the year before that, my fig tree actually uh, produced figs in the spring, or I should say early summer, and then it also produced more figs, an abundant abundance of figs in the fall. So I got two seasons or two two harvestings of figs and they were so delicious they looked just like this and it was called the bensonhurst fig tree 
I had gotten it from QVC and it was part of the Roberta's, um, Roberta's Gardens. Um, and I think that they just created or gave it their own name. They probably changed it a little bit, but they gave it their own name. And the fruit was just beautiful. It's, it, it looks like, it looked like this. Let me see if I can get this. You see how beautiful that looks? That's how my figs turned out. And that's how these figs are going to turn out too. And they were very delicious. They tasted like jam. Yeah, like grape jelly with that kind of jam taste. It was so delicious. And I tried to make jam with it too. And it came out okay. It came out okay. Hello to those that are with me. Who is that? Someone did show up. Thank you so much for coming in. Last week and a couple of, excuse me, weeks back, it has been so difficult trying to get on. Hey, Monica. Yes, I have the Black Mission fig and the LSU fig. How are you, Monica? Yes. Hi, Catherine. I just want to drop in to say hi. I will be leaving at 6 p.m. Have a blessed day night no problem no problem um i'm glad that you did show up and um that it's you and me yeah how are you doing you've been so good monica in showing up on on these uh, wednesdays it's just a good thing and you know what i updated my phone so i don't know if you've noticed it it's a little bit brighter a little more clearer hopefully i updated my phone and i didn't uh, at first, I had the similar problems that I had with my other phone, but now um, this is just uh, so much more better, so much more clearer. And so hopefully it will be better for everyone, that you all will be able to see much more better and we won't have to worry about um, the time and all those different things. Your favorite. I love being here. Yes, it's clear. That's good. That's good. And uh, I didn't, it's, it's just, it's just nice. It's good to, to treat yourself. Sometimes I hesitate in, in up, in treating myself and, or giving myself the permission for the upgrade. I don't know why. Some things I'm just so liberal at it. I don't think twice about, and then some things I just delay and getting a new phone was such a delay for me. I think it's because I had grown accustomed to it. It was like my buddy, my friend. <laughs> I'm loving, I, I, I'm lovely dove 23. Hello, lovely dove. How are you? So I had to finally give in to this. And I guess uh, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. You know how they say beautiful fig trees. Thank you, honey. They tell you um, um, all things work together for good, right? Sometimes you got to be pushed into this to things sometimes things come up in life and they seem to be like a big storm they just seem to be uh, such a circumstance that is just shaking your your comfort zone but actually it's an opportunity for us to change and to grow and to increase and and sometimes we dodge that because we prefer they say that people prefer comfort you know, we love being in that comfort zone so that um, when we are pushed in and nudged in to change, sometimes it's just difficult. Uh, I know my phone is 15 years old and I refuse to upgrade. It will have to fall apart. Yeah, so you know what I'm talking about, Monica. <laughs> yeah, it's just, you know, it's sometimes, you know, just some things. But, but I was, I've been studying this actually for the day too in in uh, my times of study that i've been doing that um you know, circumstances come up hey sonia how are you how are you circumstances come up that force you to change and it's not until after you've actually crossed over and you've experienced the change that you realize well i should have done this sooner why didn't i do it sooner what kept me back you know, this delay, delay, delay. Well, sometimes, sometimes delay is good because then uh, when you when you rush into things, it could be um, detrimental or it could be uh, too, you know, it's it could be that it, it wasn't for, it was meant to happen, 
but it wasn't for the timing. It's a matter of finding the timing. And especially in gardening, we know about timing because uh, I was looking at my journal, my journals that I had last year, my journal that I had last year, and I was just wondering, well, what was I doing at this time? What had I planted? What was, what was already in the ground? And when I looked at it, um, I had already really started um, growing out in the garden. Um, I had already started growing my vegetables, my early spring vegetables. I put here planted cabbage seeds in bottles on 3 17 22. I well, I did my um gardening, but I also did some outdoor gardening as well in the ground. I had sowed seeds and I also uh went to Costco and had picked my um Costco flowering plants and so forth and a lot of things that I ha I haven't done. I just I haven't done them yet. And I don't I don't know. It's just it just seems like everything for for me anyway has been like delayed. What about you all? How are things going for you in your garden? Have you been do you think that you've been on pace with what you want to get done or do you think that this year everything is like a little delayed or you know, and which region, by the way, what zones are you in? Monica, what zone are you in? I think I know what zone Sonia is in. And um, my, oh, oh I, I am lovely dove 23. What zone are you in? Yeah, I'm in zone six. I'm in zone six. What zone are you in? When you come on, tell us what zone you're in. Because it is different for each zone, right? We know that each zone is experiencing, um, they're either like two weeks ahead or two, two weeks be, um, below. That. So now, Sonia, you'd be ahead of us for sure because you're in zone A, B, and it's a much, much warmer. For me, I am... You did. Hey, Deborah, you got a notification. Yeah, why don't you come in? Just tell us what zone are you in? Yeah, because that is really, I think, affecting um, some of us, at least for me. Um, in my zone here, because of, uh, you're in zone six too? Okay. Yeah, um, it, it just seems like it's such a delay. Monica, did you get the snow? Did you get, did you experience snow and snowstorm? Um, are you, which, did you experience the snowstorm? Uh, be, good evening. Hey, Gardens Army. Hey, Bev, you're in zone 6B. Did you experience the snow? Did you all have a storm? I think that storm kind of like set, it's kind of like slowed everything down a bit, don't you think? No snow, just cold? Okay. Yeah, we got, we were supposed to get a lot of snow and it turned out to be snow and rain. You're in zone 8A. Okay, so you're warm like Sonia, Deborah. Yeah, so um, you can get more done, I think. You can grow more than we can up here. For me, it just seemed like everything has been a little slow. No snow, only rain for you. For you too, um, Beverly? Yes, our gardens are me. Um, but it has been cold and windy. Today it has been extremely windy. and But the sun has been shining. It's been bright, which is so good. And that was the other question or thought that I was thinking. That I think because of that loss of the hour, it just has made me feel a little groggy. I don't know about you. Lots of rain here too. You too. Well, yes, Sonia, you're in California. And uh, they've been now, all of that rain now, they're making up for last year with all of the drought. You won't have the drought problem. No, ma'am, it's cold and windy this week. Yes. Oh, it has been so windy. And uh, as outside, you could hear the wind howling and everything. And it just, it just makes you feel, oh my goodness, winter's still here. It doesn't want to leave. But then... I started thinking of the fact, you know, that we say April showers brings May flowers. And then we also say about the March, that it comes in like the lion and the lamb, that it comes in like a lion. March comes in like a lion and then it leads out like a lamb. 
I hope it's true because this lion part needs to hurry up and finish so that we can have some lamb, so that we could, uh, some calm, so that we can get out there and uh, do our outdoor gardening because I have so much clean up. Tell me in the chat, are you all finished with your garden clean up? Are your beds looking spick and span and ready to go? Not mine. <laughs> <laughs> my my beds are not looking clean oh my goodness i have so much i have so much work to do i i every time i look out the window and i sort of i start dreaming of what i want to do and how i want to do it and especially the parts that i want to do with the herb garden and the um and the growing of the kale and so forth my little kitchen garden area i have lots of cleanup to do ha 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 yes i'm like oh my goodness and i feel um i feel like things are getting away from me but really you know the good thing about summer uh i mean spring over the next month anyway i think the good thing about it is that it's going to be warmer we're going to have more light we can stay outside. Hey, Brooke, how are you? Brooke has been busy. Have you all visited Brooke's Vintage Gardeners um, channel? She has all of this, this winter sowing out there. She's got tons and tons of plants. She's got so many plants. Oh, my goodness. Her, her, all of her different things that she's growing. Oh, it just, it just makes me marvel at at her seedling she is definitely into seed starting anyone any of you all starting your seed seed starting uh put it put it in the chat there yes she's busy over there yes she is yes she is. so do i gardens are me hi brooke yes i'm a subscriber to her channel good good because brooke is busy as a bee she's busy 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 just uh, planting that planting all of those seedlings my goodness what are you up to right now how many seedlings do you have <laughs> you have a thousand thousand plants to plant by springtime you're gonna be busy girl uh -huh. all of those different types two thousand Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, 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 Jesus. I'm praying for you, girl. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Send some angels to help her out. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. You know, I, you know, sometimes like when I'm out in the garden and something's too heavy, I start to pray. And that's right. I said, God, please send me some, some, some gardening angels to come and help me move this heavy brick to move this stuff around. I can't do it. Especially my husband is far away. I start praying. Mm, garden angels, come on, planter. Come and help me. I need some help. <laughs> anyway, you you guys make me feel so good because I was feeling really tired. But wow, I am getting some energy from you all. This is a Great. Uh, Deborah says, I sowed seeds at the daughter's apartment, but we'll sow in ground when it gets warmer. That's good. That's good. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's good, Deborah. You think it's funny, Beverly, huh? You think I'm funny? I'm telling the truth, girl. I'm telling the truth. Sometimes when those things, those bags get heavy. Oh, my goodness. I wonder. And, you know, I have to think. I said, I need a solution. How am I going to get from point A to point B? How I'm going to move these bricks and these things. And I come up. It just like comes to me. These ideas just come to me and start, um, you know, uh, helping me to come up with some creative, creative ideas. I start looking around. I see some wheelbarrows and things, you know, things that I can move things with and some pails and all of that. And I'm able to get stuff done. But yes, um, so my, our topic today is on um i just put down figs fruit and um friends because i was wondering what am i going to talk about what am i going to share with my friends my gardening friends um and i was getting kind of worried that i wouldn't have anything to discuss and i kept looking around and kept thinking about it i laid down i daydreamed i um 
went to my laptop, my laptop, then to my iPad, and just trying to think of, well, what can we talk about? Because right now I feel like there's like a, a con, you know, within the garden, it's like a waiting period for me. Well, not for Brooke, because she's busy doing her little seedlings. But for me, because I don't have that indoor thing. Hey, Yami! Um, that it has been like a, a, a sort of time where I'm wondering, well, when am I going to be able to sew? And we always have something to talk about. <laughs> you know, God is good, Deborah, because he's sure to give me something to talk about. Because <laughs> then I looked and I saw my fig trees. And I said, you all have not seen my fig trees for a while. I mean, you saw them last week, but you don't, you haven't seen them now. Look at them. Look at this. This, these fig trees, look, it's as big as my hand. Look at that. The fig trees have really, really grown. Look at this. I put them by the window and they are doing so well. Remember when they were just the little stem? When they were just the little stem? And now look at them. These are like full-fledged little trees. Yes, they are. And they they all of them, all three of them. Um, this one is the largest one, but then this one is next. This one's so cute. And I know why this one is the way it is. Because it it has been um this one doesn't get as much sun. For some reason, I didn't haven't given it the the choice spot, but I just love how it's growing straight and tall and majestic. Yes, it looks good. And then this one here, check this out. Look at these leaves. Look at that. Isn't it fantastic? Cheese. <laughs> I could take a picture with it. Cheese. <laughs> Look at that. Don't they look beautiful? Yeah. And so I thought about that. I thought about fig trees. Yes, my fig trees. That I will show you my fig trees. But also, what came... Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Yay. Woo. But also, what came... What are you feeding them? Well, I planted them in the, the potting soil, which was the miracle Grow potting soil initially. And uh, then I gave them one of those uh, jobs uh, sticks. Um, after a while, I, I, sticked, I, I put that inside. I watered them from the bottom. I, don't, I try not to water them from the top. So, um, and then I give them water. I give them a water at least, um, at least once a week, maybe twice, depending on how dry it is, you know, the soil looks. And it's amazing how the water just seeps up from the bottom and it just moistens them. And then when it's, when it's um, full and there's still some water at the bottom, I just drain it out because I don't want to get any of those nuts or those flies. So I try not to water from the top. And then today, actually, I did give them a little of the soluble uh, fertilizer. I gave them a little bit of that. And um, I could, so it could green up because I want them to stay healthy. But um, they, they are really, really good. Uh, I, I'm, I was reading, I was reading online from uh, Monty Don. Monty Don, he is with Gardener's World. And here from gardenersworld.com, they tell you how to grow figs. Um, and that is actually how my figs look. When, when they developed from that particular tree, they looked just like that. And they were so delicious. I have videos of it. And it tasted like jam. Almost reminded me of grape jelly. It was really, really good. And it says all products, the, the um, fig tree, how to grow figs, it was giving us some really good information. It says, fresh figs are delicious, sweet treats, a real taste of sunny climes. Uh, figs are well worth the effort to grow and they're attractive. Scented foliage makes a great addition to the garden too. 
Fig trees are native to Syria and Persia, and while Syria, excuse me, Syria and Persia, and while fig trees in Britain might not yield the same quantity or sweetness of fig trees in the Mediterranean, they can be grown successfully in a sheltered sunny spot, such as against a wall. The idea is to trick them into thinking they're growing on a rocky hillside, hilltop in the eastern Mediterranean by keeping their roots restricted. <coughs> Hello. Hello. I see growing what I eat. How are you? Good to have you with us here at Catherine's Garden and Home. Yeah, we're talking about fig trees. And, you know, I didn't realize that that is what it is, that uh, fig trees in the Mediterranean, they can be grown successfully in a shelter study spot um, against a wall to trick them into thinking they're growing on a rocky hilltop on the eastern Mediterranean by keeping their roots restricted. And that is what has happened with my fig tree outside is that it is like on, um, on a slope going up to the upper gardens and right where I put it, I put a lot of bricks or um, it's almost like retained there with some of the, the bricks, the landscape bricks that I had put there. And I think that all of that happened, that they, they got that, that, that restriction and um, it was it was really really nice to see it like that. I mean, when I read this, to to know that that's exactly what was happening with the fig tree that I had out there. But then it also it says, I if I ever grow enough figs, I'm going to bake fig Newton. Yes, <laughs> you know I actually made like a little fig tart. We I had so much figs that particular year. It uh, wasn't last year, the year before I had so many figs. You all know, you were with me and you saw me bragging and talking about my figs and my fig tree and all of that stuff. And then last year, no figs. I don't know, last year, my figs just, the fig tree just died out. But the thing is, is that the root was still there in the ground and it grew new branches, fresh branches. So that was a really good thing. Um, but then I like this idea because this is what I have to decide to do. Either to keep these fig trees that I have here in pots or place them in the ground. And so that's the decision that I need to make uh, because it says that the fig tree likes its roots to be cons confined. I have a fig tree, brown turkey, new, new growth already. Wow, that's good. That's good. Uh, that's good, um, growing what I eat. I have mine in a container. Yeah, and it, it says that growing it in the container might be a, a good thing for it because it does like its roots constricted. Yeah, the idea is to trick them into thinking they're growing on a rocky hillside in the eastern Mediterranean by keeping their roots restricted. Several fig varieties are hardy enough for outdoor cultivation uh, in the UK and should and should crop even during poor summers. Choose varieties like brown turkey and Bunswick, both hardy varieties bred to thrive in the British climate. They're suitable for growing in large pots, suitable for growing in large pots, which restricts their roots and compact and, st uh, and, compact and standard varieties make good trees for small gardens. They're all self-fertilized, so you only need one tree for a decent crop. Some varieties are only suitable for growing in an unheated greenhouse. Yeah, so the, the whole idea of my thoughts now are, am I going to put them in the landscape or am I going to keep them in pots? And I think I'm going to keep at least one or two of them in the pots and put one of them in the, in the ground. Yeah, because I already have three in the ground. I have the what the main mother one, then I have another one, um, which is close to the house, and then I have one further up in another section um, growing. But I think I'm going to try it out in a pot. Have, have 
You, anyone else have a fig tree in a pot? Do we all have fig trees? Or am I the, I know that um, some of you just mentioned growing what I eat says that he has his in a pot. I have mine in a container, 17 gallon. Wow, that's good. Hi everyone. Vintage says I have all of mine in the ground. I found this one fig called Figno, Fignum, Figminol, Fignum, what, what, and what, oh, really? Fignominial, Fignominial, am I pronouncing it right? My phonetics, <laughs> phonics, Fignominial, all right. All right, is it is it similar, Brooke, to the uh, brown turkey fig? Yours is in a pot? Mm-hmm. Okay, so yours is in the ground. She says that. And Deborah says, keep them in pots and sprinkle them throughout your garden. That's a that's a good idea, Deborah. I think that would be that would be nice. And I love those beautiful pots that I was able to get. I'm gonna go and get me some really nice pots, some beautiful pots, and um, I think that that would add some more color and life. Uh, Sonia says mine is in a pot. Yeah. Fignominial fig tree is bred to grow in a container. It gets 28 inches tall. Oh, okay, thank you, Brooke, for sharing that. I'll look out for that. Brampton, um, Brampton, hey. Hey, Brampton Gardener. Hello, Rachel. How are you today? Um, Beverly says, I don't have any fig trees. Time to get one. Yes, Beverly. It's time to get one. Get a fig. Everybody say, Beverly, get a fig. Beverly, get a fig. No, sir. <laughs> no pressure, Bev. No pressure. Just fun. Just fun. <laughs> Let's see. Phenomenal. Figo. Yes. Fig, fig, nominal, 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 fig, nominal, <laughs> fig, nominal. <laughs> Hi, so, soldier, everybody. Oh, wow. Um, uh, growing what I eat says, I want to learn how to make cuttings from my fig tree. Well, you know, it's not that hard, actually. I'm good. Hey, broke farmer, how you doing? You're going to be broke no more. I decree and declare that you will be a wealthy farmer. We're going to change the name from broke to, to um, abundant farmer. Yes. But how are you? I'm so glad you came to join us. Thank you. Uh, Deborah says, hi, Brampton Gardener. Hi, Ricky, says um, um, Rachel. Ha, 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 he must have heard fig tree. <laughs> Monica, she says, hello, broke farmer, everybody's, Bev, Bev, get a fig, says Yami. Bev. Yami yeah, says, get a fig, get a fig, get a fig. I have to go in a few, in a few. I have a Zoom meeting to attend. Well, thank you so much, Deborah, for popping in. Thank you guys for popping in. And I was able, you missed earlier that I was able to, I updated my phone. So I'm in good position for this year. Yes, I am. I got an update. Mm-hmm. I'm so happy. And I figured out how to get stuff straight with this phone. So we're back on track again. I think that was kind of making me a little bit upset. But um, I ended up, and I ended up upgrading my phone and putting everything in order. 
of figuring out how to make sure that everything's going well so that I could be here on time and that we can have a really good time together. You know, um, this phone also gives me more battery life, but I don't want to overtake, you know, to overdo with the time. I'm still going to limit our times together to an hour, you know, from 5.30 to 6.30 or so. Uh, maybe going over just a little bit in the summertime. But um, I just want you all to know how I do appreciate the fact that you all have come and that you you look out for me every Wednesday and um, I wasn't feeling so up and willing and ready to get started. I was just trying to figure out, well, when am I going to talk to you all about? And I was just, um, I almost canceled. And I'm so glad that I didn't, that I overcame those feelings and just started just to look around and see what I have. And, and know that we will always have something to talk about here at Catherine's Garden and Home, where we grow, 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 grow together, even if it is just for us to come together and uh, talk garden talk, you know? So that's why I wrote down figs, fruit, and friends. The figs, of course, my fig trees actually gave me the inspiration for the topic today because I said, Really, I see my fig trees every day. I see them growing and that you too can have a fig tree and have multiple ones. And now um, it was asked, well, how do you get it started? Well, I, have my, I had my fig tree there that was growing and it was the end of the season and I just cut off the tops of the branches. I just snipped off the tops because I wanted to make or create a, a floral arrangement and uh, I wanted to bring it in and I put it in water and uh, so so good gardener how are you hey man I'm late hey family how are you no you're just on time you're good you're good um and so what I did was I cut the I don't know if you could see this here but you see this top this was the top of the the branch so I just cut the branch down and it was looking something like this. It had branched out with the leaves and um, I just put it in water. And it just so happens that fig tree cuttings root well in water. If you put them in water, they will root. They will root. And they will, uh, as soon as you start to see the white, of the roots on it then put it in a um in some soil yeah put it in some potting soil and give it a sunny window monica you got to run Catherine. i'm leaving now have a wonderful life bye everyone be blessed thank you so much monica monica was first monica was number one monica was first here she was my company for a little bit then sonia came on Woo! Oh, and also um, the other lady too. I need your first name. Um, she was she was here early too. And I see Yankee sister there, Monica. Monica. Then I'm Lovely Dove. Twenty three was next. Lovely Dove. Twenty three. What is your first name? So I can call you by your first name. Hallelujah. Yes, you guys are making me happy. And I have my uh, wonderful Thelma, Thelma, Gar um, Yankee sister. Yankee sister showed up. One goes out, one comes in. Yes, it is so nice to have you all. Come in a little late, but here, hello, Catherine. Hello, gardening gang. Hello. And we have some others that have just growing what I eat just came on. Hallelujah. I'm feeling good. My spirit is rising. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah, so it's real easy. And for the last couple of months, I think that was like in um, maybe October, I had put it in the water. And then I started noticing the roots by the leaves came off. And then by January... I did a video of this. So if we look back on some of my older videos, you'll see. Um, I think by um, 
Dece by December or so, I started to see roots. And when I noticed that, then I transplanted them into containers. And I didn't have any real containers in the house, so I just used some of the plastic bottle containers that I had and created pots out of them. Yeah, I put some holes in the bottom, you see? And I love this because you get to see the roots. You see the roots? You get to see the roots. And when I saw the roots that they were still growing and that they look healthy, it's just so encouraging. I actually love the clear pots. See the clear pots there? You can see the roots really well. It's wonderful. Look at that. So... I know for certain that they, they're doing well, and I was able to really observe them and also able to um, water them. I watered them from the bottom up, and I think that makes the difference because watering them from the top down um, indoors, it just creates those, those gnats you know, those, um, and bugs and pests, but because, um, they're being watered from the bottom up and I don't overwater them, that has helped to keep them healthy. And I move them around a lot. Um, I move them, uh, to this location, but I also move them to the sunny window when the sun, and they get the sun as soon as the sun comes up around 6.30 or so, the sun comes up. They're right in that window, the east-facing window. And it, then it moves uh, this way around. And so they get a lot of sun. Um, and, um, you know, it's warm because they're in the dining room kitchen area here where it's fairly warm. In the evenings, it's a little cooler in this area, but during the day. And then I think they get a lot of um, attention because my husband sees them, my, my children see them, my grandson, <clears throat> he loves the tree. He says, Nana, Nana, the beautiful tree. Look at the tree. Can I have one of your trees? I said, no, baby. <laughs> I love my grandson. At first, I was going to give him one of my trees for his uh, his birthday that came up. Then after a while, I looked at them. I said, no, baby. When you come, you get to see Nana's trees. That's it. <clears throat> but I feel a little bit, um, I feel connected to the trees. I need to start my mango seeds tomorrow. Yes, um, I tried that mango seed starting before... Um, uh, Rachel, uh, it didn't work for me. I think it's more me than it. I think I neglected them, but that's a good, uh, good idea. Yeah, try it again and vid and show us how to do that again. Yeah, they've grown huge, and you know, I just realized that uh, you all haven't seen them in a while. Actually, last week you saw them, but look at that in that short space of time. Look at how these leaves has really, really grown. It's so fantastic. Yeah, so the other thing that I wanted to share with you too, uh, so I hope I answered that question for the person who was asking about how to grow the fig cuttings. It's not so difficult. And I think that, um, you know, if you already have a, a, an existing fig tree, you can take cuttings from your fig tree. And you just want to make sure that you get a couple of the notches. You could clip it from the right where the notch is here. You clip it from the bottom and uh, you clip it at the bottom and you put it in water, right? You could put it in water and let it get started and it will develop roots. And as soon as you see the white um, coming out, you know, the roots coming out, then you want to transplant it into soil. I just used um, potting mix. I had some miracle Grow potting mix, and I just uh, put it into the potting mix there. And um, uh, because the miracle Grow already had, miracle Grow already had some, um, you're going to do this this year? For sure, yes. It had already had the fertilizer in it. It wasn't necessary for me to fertilize it. Uh, but since it's been a couple of months now from that time until now, I did give it one of those Job's 
uh, white sticks that I got from the Dollar Tree. I sticked, I did put one in like in the corner of it too, so that it, it if it could be like a um, <clears throat> a slow uh, release uh, fertilizer. Yeah, and I did this morning, I did give it some more soluble fertilizer, but this is over time because you don't want to over fertilize as well. Um, and watering, as far as watering, I water them at least once a week, watering from the bottom and let it soak up so that way I don't have to water all the time. And then anytime I notice that the leaves are kind of like wilted down, you could kind of tell because you, you're observant. I'm observant of them, of the plant. And when I notice that it's kind of wilty, I then say, oh, I think you need some water. And I give it a little water from the bottom. Um, and my next step is to continue to watch them grow. I think I'm going to be putting them in pots because of what I just read to you from Gardener's World, how Monty Don suggests that you give them um, constricted roots. They like their roots constricted. And, um, and think of it as growing in the Mediterranean. Yes, and so the good thing about <clears throat> These particular fig trees are that they are winter hardy, um, and, uh, but yet you still have to care for them. The other thing I wanted to share with you is this, my um, catalog came in. This is called Young Seeds and Plants Catalog. And in it, it, it does share some other fruit trees. And that is something that I am very much interested in is uh, other fruit trees now tell me what other kind of fruit trees do you all have in your in your in your gardens do any of you have any of those other fruit how to root a fig tree cutting with no special technique winter versus spring fig cuttings comparison my kincaid yes i love my kincaid he is great for propagating i love my kincaid he, he will show you how to prop. I only have crab apples. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, that's good. What kind of fruit trees are you interested in? Well, what kind of fruit trees do you have? <laughs> I have, I have pear. I have an apple. I have, um, plums. Um, and I don't know if they're doing as well. Brooke, uh, Brooke, tell us about your fig trees. You have apple, elderberry, and fig. Wow, elderberry. Yes, do you make those that elderberry sauce, Yankee sister? Do you make the, uh, yeah. Broke, tell us about your fig tree. Come, your, I mean, your fruit trees. Come on, tell us, tell us. I'm excited about fruit, uh, fruit trees. Yeah, I, and um, I, I uh, had at one point a Maya lemon tree. But uh, it was so hard to take care of because I had to keep it inside and then it got, I have them all over 75 fruit trees. Yay, let's give them, you're not broke. You're, you're rich. <laughs> you got all those fruit trees. I mean, fruit trees. Oh my goodness. Wow, bro. You're the fruitful man. Tell us some of them. Name them. Name them one by one. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is so good. No, they have not fruited for me yet. Hopefully this year. Okay, Yankee sister. Yeah, so here in this, he's fruit rich. Yes, we got to change his name. He's fruit rich farmer. Woo hoo hoo. <laughs> Seven. Yummy, you got 75 too? Oh my goodness. Yummy has 75. You have 75 fruit trees? Oh my goodness. Wow. That is something. Rogue farmer's not broke anymore. He's fruitful farmer. Fruit rich farmer. I like that name. Fruit rich farmer, 
Fruit Rich Farmer. That's who you are. Fruit Rich Farmer. You had to come and join us so that we could change your name. Fruit Rich Farmer. Mm -mm -mm. Fruit Rich Farmer. Yeah, yeah. Woo! <laughs> You had to come and join us so we could change your name to Fruit Rich Farmer. That's it. All right. So look at this. They have all these different apple trees. Oh, your reaction to his 75. Broke Farmer. Yeah, Broke Farmer changing the game out here. Yes, yeah, so good, Gardner. That's right. There he is. Put that on a, a shirt. Fruit Rich Farmer. Yeah, Fruit Rich. Ha, ha, ha. That's true. Grow what I eat. It's smiling. Yummy. Ooh, you don't have 75 trees. Okay, yummy. <laughs> Look at these apples. I am trying to grow my apple trees. I have, I have one apple tree that had, it was grafted on with different, uh, different grafts of different trees, uh, different fruit trees. It had um, the, um, it has the main stem and then it had, um, let's see, the Macintosh. It has, uh, um, you know, when they graft them on, right? Connected. So I have my Macintosh. I have the Granny Smith and it had something else, some others, uh, attached to it um but it, the trees are still small and i did um i did what do they call it um spray them gave them the dormancy spray i hope that that helps because it just seems like you know they, they're just so prone to the apple trees are prone to um pests and then my peach tree i got leaf curl with it I have a peach tree, and um, but then I also sprayed it too, and hopefully it will do better. But it did produce peaches. Uh, the peaches were a good size, a good size, and when I cut them, it looked still edible, but um, it just seemed like there was something trying to bore into them. So what I need to do, I think, um, rich, rich fruit, um, fruit rich farmer, <laughs> AKA, uh, broke farmer. I think I'm going to need to, uh, spray them again. Hey, don't hurt the harvest. Yes. Um, I think I'm going to have to, to spray them again because, um, it, uh, the first time I sprayed, last year I sprayed them once with the dormancy spray and the neem oil. It was neem oil and the horticultural spray. Um, but then I think I need to, to, to spray them again. You said certain varieties do better in certain states. Most states have varieties that do better there. Yeah, I, well, I was hoping that that's what I would get. But um, then I bought two from Lowe's. Um, and I put them close to one another and I have, they've been in the ground for about five years now and not a thing, no signs of, of, of fruit at all, but they're growing and they look like they wanted to be espalier, but it just, I don't know. I tried to espalier it so that it can grow, um, those little knobs with the apples. So I'm still learning about the fruit trees. Oh no, what? Oh no, what happened? Don't hurt the harvest, says hello. Brampton says, my crab apple is ornamental, but I use the neighbors. She doesn't harvest at all or do anything with it. So she lets me harvest. It gets worms easily. I wonder if she'd let us spray them. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Yeah, I spray once a week, three weeks before they bloom. Oh, so maybe one spraying is not enough. Hmm? Well, it's still cold, so maybe I need to spray. I will see if I can get in a, you know, get the, the it just takes a lot of energy to get out there and spray. Because I have plum trees as well. I have two plum trees. I have um, the golden yellow 
or egg, uh, the golden egg plum tree. And I also have the, um, I don't see them here. And I have the, the, the purple, you know, the regular purple plums. And they were good. But last year, those plums, that plum tree got so many aphids on it. I was like, what is going on here? And I had sprayed too. And it had so many, it was like, it was like a, um, it just like the aphids just all congregated around them. Yeah, and it, they, the thing is, is that the, the, um, the trees all blossomed so nicely. The plum trees, they had blossoms on them. I said, oh my goodness, I'm gonna finally get a good, a good selection of plums, a good harvest of plums. And then these, these uh, aphids or bugs just came in and wiped them out. He says, spray organic castor oil soap mix for aphids on your trees. Yeah, I'm going to have to work on those trees. And uh, I have a pear tree, but it's small. And uh, that's it. So, but you know, what I really want to get is a cherry tree. I, I think this year, if I see a cherry tree, then I'm going to pick up the cherry tree. Cherry tree. A sweet cherry tree. Does anyone else have a cherry tree? Anybody got a cherry tree? I'm not asking. Uh, I know that our 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 rich, our fruit rich farmer has a cherry tree. He's got to have one at least. Yeah. Well, anyway, where is everybody? You guys there? No, I'm just beginning. Yes, me too, Thelma. But you know, it's exciting. You know, to think about what other trees we could get. I don't have an apricot or a nectarine. I might have to try that or maybe another pear tree. But um, look out for those different, the, those different, yeah, cherry trees don't do well in Texas. Oh, you're in Texas so good, gardener. Oh, wow. Growing what I eat. I have two Barbados cherry trees. Woo, Barbados. I've always wanted to go to Barbados. Yeah. We had a cherry tree when I was a kid. It was huge. We had to climb up it in the harv in it to harvest. It was fun. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah, it seems like they grow well. Cherry trees grow well in in Canada, Rachel. You know they, there's that other um channel, their flowers, their flower farm. And one of the things that they featured was the fact that they were able to grow these beautiful cherries. Um, it's um, Don't Eat the Grass, I think that's the name of their, cha their channel. And they had um, beautif a beautiful, beautiful cherry tree that was huge. And the ch cherries were, were a good size. Um, and very, you know, very, you could tell that they were delicious and you can't eat the grass yeah um and uh, they're up there in canada and uh, it it almost make it made me want to have a cherry tree you know to watch him eating his cherries uh it just seemed like it's just wonderful to be able to go out and, at a certain time of the year and and pick those cherries yeah well it seems like we're doing really well for time. And I think I've covered everything. Calvin, ask your extension office which varieties will grow. Yes. Yes, we will. We will. Cherry trees uh, must need the chill hours like the apple trees. Yeah. I would think so. I think they're probably on the same kind of... Um, we have tons of apple orchards around here. Yes, yes. Yeah, well, we, we have, uh, we'll do, okay. You know, there is, um, 
there is my apple orchard that I love to go to. So it's not that there's a lack of apples and apple trees or apple orchards. We have a um, apple orchard in Stowe, Stowe in um, Stowe, Massachusetts. Um, it's called Honey Pot Hill uh, Apple Orchard. And my daughter Karen and I, every year, we go apple picking. So I look forward to that. And the different apples that they have at the orchard is just so beautiful. They have the Golden Delicious, they have the Empire, uh, the Granny Smith, they have uh, Macintosh. I love, um, I love them all. I love them all. I love um, the, let me see if they have it here. The Honey Gold. I love them all. The Gravenstein. Honey Crisp. Yeah, the Gala Apples. The Cortland. I love Cortland Apples. Oh, I love the Cortland Apples. And their Cortland Apples are so, so good. So I think I covered everything. We talked about figs. We talked about fruit trees. And we've talked about friends. And you are my friends. Thank you, everyone, who's come to join us here. And uh, you have really lifted my spirits. You helped me to feel good. Because the last thing is, how are you all handling the change, the time change? Because that lo loss of our um, on Sunday has just got me on a, like a, I'm so sleepy now. It's, it's like, I don't know. I don't know. I just, this, I hate the time change. I hate when they do that. I just wish that they would just leave it alone. Either the daylight savings time, but I'm happy for daylight savings time. I'm still getting used to it. Yeah. It's like, I feel so groggy. I'm ready to go take a nap. And, um, it's just this adjusting to the time change is just, whew. and then with the cold air and the wind and the snow and it's still chilly out. It's like, oh, I want to just, just snuggle. I enjoy the time change. I was working only had two work seven instead of eight. Oh, okay. Well, it worked out for somebody, <laughs> but you know what? I am thankful too for the time change. Why? Because usually at this time, at 621 here in the Northeast, it would be dark. It would be dark out. But now we have more time to work in the garden. So that's the upside. We're going to leave on an up note. And the up note is that it's actually still light outside. That soon I'm going to be able to take this live outside in the garden. Woo! Yay! I'll be outside in the garden on the deck. We're going to take this, this show on the road, out on the deck. <laughs> we'll be outside soon. So that is the positive note here to end this, this, this uh, live. Yay! I am so excited about that because you know what? My winter jugs are doing good. Woohoo! Yay! Yes! My winter jugs are doing so good. Um, I actually uh, see them sprouting. My sage, thyme, my uh, lupin, and some of the other things. But that's for another time. Woo! As we grow, 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 grow together. Catherine's garden and home. That's right. Grow, 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 grow together. Grow, 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 grow together. Grow, 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 grow together. In Catherine's garden and home. Uh-huh. Catherine's garden and home. Beverly says, my winter song bottles are doing well, too. That's good. Grow, 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 grow together. That's good, Bev. Grow, 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 grow together. That's right. Grow, 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 grow together. Catherine's garden and home. Uh-huh. A grow, 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 grow together, Sonia. Grow, 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 grow together, Raisha. 
Grow, 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 grow together, Beverly. Grow, 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 grow together. Thelma, grow, Thelma, grow. Thelma, grow, oh, grow, grow. Grow, 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 grow together, yeah, me. Grow, 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 grow together, everyone. Grow, 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 grow together. Catherine's garden and home. That's right, Catherine's garden and home. Uh-huh. And to all of my new friends, we grow, grow, grow together here, yeah. We get happy, we sing our song. Ah, yes, we do, cause we're a grow, grow, Tariq. Grow, 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 grow together. Down, a grow, 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 grow together. Come on, those of you who are new, I'm gonna have to go all the way back to find your name so I can sing it. Grow what I eat, whoa, whoa, whoa. Grow, 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 grow together, so good gardener. We're growing together. Broke farmer who is now changing his name to fruit, rich fruit farmer. I think, I can't remember. <laughs> Broke farmer's growing those fruits. Yeah, he's rich, rich, rich in fruits. Grow, grow, grow what I eat. Grow, 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 don't stop the harvest. Oh, grow, 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 grow together. As we're moving on together, yes. As we grow, 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 grow together. So good gardener. Grow, 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 grow together. Grow, grow, broke at vintage gardener. We haven't forgot you, girl. As she grows those 2,000 shoots and roots. Ah, grow, 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 Monica, who's left us, but we love you, Monica. Grow, 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 grow together. Grow, grow, down around. Grow, grow, everyone who watches the replay. Grow, 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 grow together in Catherine's garden and home. Oh, yes. Whew. That's it, people. Yes, let's all say goodbye to one another. Did you say goodnight to everyone while I was singing? Hmm? Fruit rich farmer, let's go. Broke farmer, yeah. Grow, 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 grow together. <laughs> yeah. Peace, fam. Yes, bye, everybody. Nighty night, fam. Stay blessed. Night, Rachel. Yummy. Bye, everybody. So good, gardener. Y'all stay blessed, fam. We bless, we bless, we bless. Yes, yes. Stay blessed, Sonia. Tariq, yay! Have a wonderful evening, everybody. You made my heart happy. I am going to sleep well. Good night, Brooke. Yay, Brooke. Brooke, I love the orchid, the orchids. I saw some orchids in the um, in the supermarket, and I almost bought one. But now you've inspired me. So next time I go into the supermarket, I might just pick up an orchid. Yes, good night, everybody. God bless you. Yes, peace to all. Shalom, peace, blessings. May your, your gardens grow, 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 grow. And let us uh, look forward to the next time. Sonia, love you. Thank you for monitoring. Thank you for being there. You're so faithful. I love you all. Yes, buy an orchid. Yay! I will, I will. <laughs> Have a good one, everybody. Love you. Bye. Grow, 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 grow together. Catherine's garden and home. That's right. Catherine's garden and home. Oh, yes. Oops. Wait. Oh. 
just one thing if you had haven't hit the subscribe button make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell for more videos all right that's right Catherine's garden at home bye <laughs>